The results from New Hampshire are in, and they're our first topic today on CNN 10. I'm Carl Azus. Wherever in the world you're watching, thank you. Here's what happened on Tuesday night in the Granite State. Senator Bernie Sanders came out on top in the Democratic primary. The lawmaker from Vermont received 25.8% of the vote, followed by Pete Buttigieg, a former mayor of South Bend, Indiana, who got 24.5%. Senator Amy Klobuchar, who represents Minnesota, came in third with 19.8 percent. Senator Elizabeth Warren of Massachusetts and former Vice President Joe Biden rounded out the top five, though they didn't win any pledged delegates. And that's really the name of the game here. Whoever wins a majority of delegates through these state primaries and caucuses is likely to become a party's nominee for president. So far, Senator Sanders and former Mayor Buttigieg lead in the Democratic delegate count, but the Iowa caucuses and New Hampshire primaries are only the first two contests. There's still a long way to go. After the results from New Hampshire came in, a few Democrats left the race. Senator Michael Bennett of Colorado, businessman Andrew Yang, and former Massachusetts Governor Deval Patrick all suspended their campaigns. They just weren't getting the votes they needed to stay in. So now there are eight Democrats still in the race. And the next contest for them will be a caucus on February 22nd in Nevada. On the other side of the political aisle, there's one candidate, former Massachusetts Governor Bill Weld, who's challenging incumbent President Donald Trump for the Republican nomination. Former U.S. Representative Joe Walsh of Illinois suspended his campaign after the Iowa caucuses last week. But in New Hampshire, like in Iowa, President Trump easily won, getting around 85.8% of the vote there, the next contest for Republicans take place in several states on Super Tuesday, March 3rd. 10 second trivia. Which of these African countries has the most official languages? South Africa, Egypt, Libya, or Nigeria? With 11 official languages, including Zulu, Afrikaans, and English, South Africa has the most on this list. According to the World Wildlife Fund, a conservation group, South Africa is one of the four main countries in Africa where you can still find rhinoceroses. All but one species of these animals are endangered. Thousands of them have been poached, illegally hunted because their horns are used in traditional Asian medicine. Even the sanctuaries that are designed to protect and preserve rhinos are under threat. But they have a new weapon in the fight against poaching, and believe it or not, it's a type of meerkat. I first saw a rhino when I was probably six, seven years old in the Kruger National Park and then I knew I wanted to protect rhinos. To be leading a project that protects so many rhinos and he's so successful in doing that, no, it's an absolute privilege, I can't ask for more. We are building a smart park based on technology that enables our rangers to be able to secure the area without many of us who might be tourists even realizing what is happening. The postcode Meerkat was a world first. If it is a specific time, there are people in the park who have not used the gate. Our system will be able to pick those up. It's difficult to find a person out there in two million hectares. It's like finding a needle in a stack of needles and then getting to him and catching him. And people think, well, that's easy. It's not easy. What the Meerkat has effectively done since its, its, its first deployment into these parts of Kruger has, has decreased poaching by up to 95%. Every day that Meerkat is working, we are saving runners. Technology makes things possible, but people makes things happen. It can't replace people, but it can make it much easier for the people to do their job. It's also exciting to start using technology in a useful way, because often we feel that we do technology for the sake of technology, 
but now we're actually doing technology for the sake of saving a, a species. You need to be able to sense, then you need to make sense of what you're sensing, and the third thing is you need to be able to respond to that. These systems all need to talk to each other. The boundary detection system alerts the Meerkat. The Meerkat alerts the rangers and alerts the helicopter, the reaction crew, gets the aircraft airborne to transfer the acquisition of the poachers over to the aircraft. People come from all over the world to come and see the wildlife in Africa. If we are not able to conserve that, that means those people will not come here. A keystone species such as the rhino will be there for my young ones to appreciate as well. Maybe even the next generations that follows them. We're into a new era of conservation where various forms of technology enable us to secure bigger areas and orientate better to what we need to do. Avocados, kale, and now mushrooms. The fungi are increasing in demand, price, and production. In fact, the American Mushroom Institute says the U.S. is producing more mushrooms per month than it ever has before. The industry trade group credits the increasing popularity of plant-based diets for the mushrooming changes, but they're not just for salads. Mushrooms can be used to make everything from furniture to clothing to shipping materials. Mycelium foam, like what's made by a company called Ecovative, isn't always the most cost-effective option for shipping, but it is changing the way some people think about mushrooms. Since the 1950s, humans have produced over 9 billion tons of plastic. Most of that is ending up in landfills and could take centuries to decompose. A miracle material found in nature could be the key to reducing plastic waste. It's called mycelium, and it comes from mushrooms. Mycelium is like the root structure of a mushroom. You're used to seeing a mushroom above ground. Uh, mycelium is like the roots beneath it. But no one had ever tried to use them to make materials. Eben Bayer is the CEO of Ecovative, a company that has developed a way to grow mycelium into specific shapes and sizes. They start by taking organic plant waste and mixing it with mycelium cells, which act as a sort of natural glue. The mycelium grows through and around those particles, and it binds them together, and you've got a grown product. Ecovative's mycelium products provide a natural alternative to packaging materials made out of plastic and styrofoam. But at the end of its useful life, you can actually break it up and you could put it in your own garden. So it's, it's a nutrient, not a pollutant. Ecovative wants to take mycelium to the next level. Our current technical focus is developing the next generation of mycelium materials, from cell scaffolding uh, to leather-like materials to even meat replacements. AKA mycelium bacon, which is still in its testing phases. The company thinks mycelium could also play a major role in construction and even in regenerative medicine. It really has boundless possibilities and it comes from its ability to move from the micro scale to the macro scale. Time to turn up the radio to CNN 10 because scientists say they've detected some mysterious radio signals from outer space. Radio signals are nothing new. But what was picked up by a radio telescope in Western Canada is a pattern of these signals that repeats every 16 days. Scientists don't know why. They think it's coming from a galaxy that's about 500 million light years away, so like outside our neighborhood, and that it could be coming from a star. Well, of course, all radio hits come from stars. It's not really transforming information. You just need to have the capacitor to keep your antennas out and tune in to whatever's dialed up and amplified across the universe, and you'll not be disappointed in what's speakering to your earphones. Radio puns, they're ear transistible, y'all. I'm Carl Azus. Timberland High School is listening today. Shout out to our viewers in St. Stephen, South Carolina. Though I don't personally pick the schools we mention, on Friday, I'll be giving a tip on how they're chosen to subscribers of our official YouTube channel. That's all for CNN. <laughs>